right, okay, so today we're going to have a look at finding the exact trigonometric values. Uh, now, some of the things on the screen that I've got, you might have seen these before, you might have seen this table on the left and just been asked to learn this, you might have seen this thing in the middle and been asked to learn this as well, or you might have seen the little hand trick. Now, I'm certainly not bashing any of these methods, but I really do not like these uh, sorts of ways of learning these, just being asked to just learn these sort of tables blindly or apply a little hand trick and have no real understanding of it. So I'm certainly not bashing these, but I'm these are ways I do not like to use when learning these exact trigonometric values. So we're going to have a look at a way of actually learning them and hopefully it's going to make a lot more sense than just looking at these and just and just remembering them blindly. But I'm certainly not bashing these. If you do want to just learn them, okay, then you are free to do so. But I'm going to show you a way of actually understanding why we get the values that we do and how we can actually go about finding them without just remembering them. Now I'm going to start with this one. Now I am going to make one slight amendment here in that the three that I've given you in the table here, I am just gonna gonna leave those ones. We do very rarely ever use the zero degree when it comes to these. And remember, just remembering zero, one, zero there. So sin zero is zero, cos zero is one, and tan zero is zero there. I think they're okay just to remember. But we're gonna have a look at these ones that are used mainly, the 30, 45, 60, and 90 degrees although you are going to have to have a good understanding of Sokotoa and a good understanding of Pythagoras in order to do this. I would say if you don't have a good understanding of Sokotoa and you don't have a good understanding of Pythagoras then you shouldn't be yet be looking at this video anyway. It's really important to have a good understanding of those topics before moving on to these harder versions of trigonometry. Okay, So I'm going to have a, an, a general idea here that you do have a good understanding of Pythagoras and Sokotoa. So I've got my Sokotoa triangles down there anyway, and let's have a look at this triangle. Now this is an equilateral triangle, okay? So we know in an equilateral triangle, all the angles are 60 degrees. So I'm gonna write that in just there. I'm gonna have a look at how to find some of the values from this particular triangle. And I'm gonna be focusing on, I'm gonna highlight it, the 30 degrees and also the 60 degrees. So this is gonna give us half of our values just looking at this triangle. Now, this is an equilateral triangle, so all the side lengths are the same. I'm going to pick the smallest number possible, and that's not going to be one, I'm going to show you why, but I'm just going to say all the side lengths are two. And the reason that I do that is if we split this up into a right angled triangle by splitting it in half, we have a number there which we can halve for the base, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at this triangle on the left hand side here, this right angled triangle. So I'm going to get rid of that two down the bottom, I'm going to write that as one, and we could write one over here as well, but I'm only going to be using half of this triangle. Now if I split the triangle in half like that, that top angle up here is not going to be 60 anymore, it's going to be perfectly split in half, so that's going to be 30 degrees. And you can see now why we're looking at 30 and 60, because within this triangle I've got 30 degrees and I've got 60 degrees. Now the only length that I'm missing in the right in the right angle triangle on the left is, the, is that height there, that dotted line that I've drawn in. So I do have to use a bit of Pythagoras to work that out. And if we think about how we do Pythagoras for that, we would do the hypotenuse squared, take away the one squared down the bottom. So to work out that height there, and if I do it up here, we would have two squared, take away one squared, which gives us four minus one, which is three, and we would square root that, leaving us with root three. So our height of that triangle on the left there is root three. So we've got all the lengths we need now. That's the only thing that we have to be able to work out. From here, it's just reading it and using those Sokotoa triangles. So if we start with sine 30, and again, I'm just gonna be using my Sokotoa triangle down here, so the SOH. To find sine, you do the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So if we look at the, the let's start with the 60. If we go with the 60 to start with, let's go for a different color. Opposite the 60, the opposite is root three and the hypotenuse is two. So our first value there, sine 60, opposite over hypotenuse is root three over two. So for sine 60, and I write it in my table, we get root three over two. Looking at the next one, my cos triangle, it's A over H, so adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent, and if we label it up to the 60, the adjacent is the one. So it's one over the hypotenuse, the hypotenuse is two. So one over two or one half. There we go, and there's my second one. That is one there that I'd say that you should know off by heart, hopefully. It's quite a nice easy one, cos 60 is one half, but you can see why you get it now. The adjacent is one, the hypotenuse is two, so it's one over two. And the last one there 
my tower triangle, my tan triangle is opposite over adjacent. And again, the opposite the 60 is that root three and the adjacent is the one just down below. So root three over one and anything divided by one is just what itself. So it's just root three. There you go. You could write root three over one, but just writing root three is absolutely fine. And there's our first three using the angle of 60. So we've got three there just by reading it off the triangle. So if we get rid of this arrow now, because we're going to move on to 30 and if looking at the 30 degrees opposite that is the one. So my adjacent now is the root three, the opposite is the one, and the hypotenuse is still always the two. So let's have a look at finding these three for the 30 degrees. So sin again is opposite over hypotenuse, opposite down there is the one, and the hypotenuse is two. So it's one over two, or a half. And again, that's one of those ones to remember, sine 30 is a half. You've got cos 30, so adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent, I've already written next to it here, is root three, and the hypotenuse is two. So it's root three over two. And there's cos 30. And the very last one that we're gonna use on this triangle is my tan triangle, which is opposite over adjacent. And again, opposite is one. The adjacent is root three. So it's one over root three. Okay. And there's our first six values using this equilateral triangle with a side length of two. So again, we did have to know a bit of Pythagoras there just so we could split it in half and write the height as root three. And we did have to just remember to actually put the length of two there so that we were able to halve it for this length of one down here. So I mean, quite a lot of people do just tend to remember this triangle or you could just remember it and I'll just draw it for you. You could just remember cutting it in half. You got two, one and root three and then your angles in there, which are 60 and 30. Okay, so some people do just like to remember this triangle. It's quite a nice visual, easy thing to remember there if you, if you do like just remembering them. Otherwise you can just construct it yourself and read off those first six values. Let's have a look at the next one. So we're gonna have a look at the 45 degrees and the 90 degrees, just as, as a thing. We could find the 90 degree one off this one as well, but I've opted just to do half from this one and half from the other one. And uh, this, this one gives us our 30 and our 60. Let's have a look at the next one. Okay, so the next one here, we are going to have a look at our 45 and our 90. Now we have already found the first six, so if we just um, write these back in. Okay, so looking at this one, we've got a right angled triangle. And again, I don't have to halve any lengths because it's already right angled in this one. I'm just going to do a unit triangle where both of these are one. So this is going to be an isosceles right angled triangle. Okay, so both of our angles down here are going to be 45 degrees and that's where we get our 45 from. And again, we'll use that 90 degree angle to find our 90s as well. So again, using Pythagoras, we can find the length of this hypotenuse here. We would do one squared plus one squared, which is two, and then square root it. So the length of this is root two. There we go, so just knowing a bit of Pythagoras, we can label this up quite nice and easily. Now moving on to actually finding the values then, let's have a look. So again, we're gonna use our formula triangles down here. Uh, and I'm just gonna have a look at one of these 45 degrees. So it doesn't matter which one we pick, I'm just gonna pick this one here. So for sin 45, it's the opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite that 45 is the one, and the hypotenuse is up here, root two, that's our hypotenuse. So for sine 45, it is one over root two, the opposite over the hypotenuse. For cos 45, well, cos is down here, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the adjacent is one as well, just down here. That's the adjacent. And again, over the hypotenuse, which is root two as get again. So it's one over root two as well. There we go. And they're both one over root two. And for the very last one, tan 45, well, the opposite over the adjacent. So the opposite is one, the adjacent is one, and one over one is just one. So there is our tan 45, quite nice and easily just to read them from the triangle. Moving on to our last one. The last one's a little bit odd when you're finding these 90 degree ones, but we'll get rid of these little labels here get rid of that and we'll get rid of this we're not using that just need to get that root 2 back there we go and we'll have a look at the 90 degrees now if we're going to use this angle here this 90 degrees it does start to make a bit of an issue when we're looking at opposites and stuff like that because we don't normally use the 90 degrees do we but if we apply the same logic to the 90 let's have a look at what happens so for the sin triangle it's opposite over hypotenuse well opposite the 90 is the hypotenuse so it's root 2 over root 2 and anything divided by itself is one. So the opposite, which is root two, also divided by the hypotenuse, which is root two, just gives us a value of one. So sine 90 is one. Okay, anything divided by itself is one. 
On to the next one, COS90. Well, this is where it gets a bit a little bit weird when you're using these, because that's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And if you have a look, adjacent to the right angle is could be either of these. It could be the one or it could be this one. They'd both they'd both be adjacent to that angle. And if we don't know which side is adjacent, we put the value of zero in. So if we can't determine the value, we can't determine the length, we just put zero in. So to do the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, I would be doing zero divided by root two. And if, you say, if I just write that, zero divided by root two, well, zero divided by anything is just zero, isn't it? So there we go, zero divided by anything is zero, so cos 90 is zero. Okay, so it's a, a little bit weird there because you can't determine the value. So if you can't determine it, you just put zero in. And we're going to apply that logic for, to our last one here for tan 90. Now for tan 90, it's the opposite divided by the adjacent. Again, these are all in our little triangles here. The opposite is root 2, opposite the 90 is root 2. And our adjacent, again, we can't determine what it is. It, it could be either of those ones, so we put 0 in. Now, we get into a bit of a maths problem here. You can't actually divide by 0, it's impossible. Um, so the value of tan 90 is just said to be undefined, okay? It's not defined. You can't actually divide by 0. You might have actually done this by accident on your calculator once, and when you do type divide by 0, it comes up with a math error because it's impossible to do. So it's undefined, and I'll just write the word undefined in there, okay? And that's the reason it's undefined because we're in these triangles. It causes you to divide by 0, and that's an actually impossible thing to do. Okay, so there are the two um, triangles that you need to know to learn all of these um, trigonometric values. Uh, hopefully you've made some good notes on that. What I'm going to do is get you to have a go. So you have the unit isosceles right angle triangle there, which you have to be able to work out the hypotenuse. And we had our equilateral triangle with side lengths two. So let's have a look. Okay, so here they are. Here are your two triangles. You need to label up the sides work out the two missing lengths in both, so the height of the triangle on the left and the hypotenuse of that um, right-angled isosceles. Once you've done that, write out your Sokotoa triangles and see how many of the values you can fill into this table. Okay, there are four, eight, 12 there to try and write. See how many you get. We'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so let's have a look at working these out then. One more time. I'm gonna do them quite quickly, obviously, because we've just gone over them. So we've got 60, 30, this length is 1, this length is 2, 2 squared take away 1 squared is, is 3, so root 3 for our height. Over to the other one, we've got 1, 1, and then root 2, and these angles are 45 degrees. Okay, I'm just going to write the 145 in. So reading the values, don't forget to write down Sokotoa. So, Sokotoa. Just so you can remember which one's which, opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, and opposite over adjacent. So onto the 30. So opposite over hypotenuse is 1 over 2. Adjacent over hypotenuse is root 3 over 2. And opposite over adjacent is 1 over root 3. There we go, using the same triangle. Moving on to the 60 degrees here. Opposite that is root three. So opposite over hypotenuse is root three over two. Oh, written that in the wrong place, brilliant. Onto the 60, so root three over two. For the cos 60, we've got adjacent over hypotenuse, so one over two. And for tan 60, we've got opposite over adjacent, so opposite is root three, adjacent is one. So root three over one, which is root three. And then onto that second triangle, let's go for a different colour. We have, starting with 45, let's use this angle. So opposite over hypotenuse is 1 over root 2. So 1 over root 2. Adjacent over hypotenuse is again 1 over root 2. Adjacent is 1, hypotenuse is root 2. And the final one here, opposite over adjacent is 1 over 1, so 1. And then the final one's there for the 90. So using our 90 degrees, remembering opposite that is root two. So opposite over hypotenuse is root two over root two, which is one. The next one, cos 90, we can't determine the adjacent. So it's zero divided by root two, which is zero. And the final one there is uh, opposite over adjacent. Again, we can't determine what we are dividing by there. We can't determine what the adjacent is, so it's undefined. Ooh, there we go, just about fit that in the box. Okay, so that one's undefined. 
So that is working out the exact trigonometric values. Hopefully that's useful. Let's have a look at a little exam style question where you might be asked to use some of these. And again, you do have to have a good understanding of thirds for some of these as well. But let's have a look. Okay, so find the exact value of tan 30 times sine 60 and give your answer in its simplest form. Now, if you had a question like this, obviously we'd have to start drawing out our triangles and work out what tan 30 and sine 60 is. Quite a nice one, because you only have to use the one triangle for 30 and 60. And if you can remember some of them, you actually can just get away with doing half of the triangle, which is what I'm gonna do. And we've got two, one, and root three. And again, we just need to read these values. So I'd be writing down Sokotoa again, just to make sure that you know which ones you're reading. Sokotoa, there we go. And let's just get these two values from the triangle. So tan 30 is opposite over adjacent. So we're looking at the 30. Opposite the 30 is one, and adjacent is root three. So tan 30 is one over root three. There we go, and there's your first one. And the next one is sine 60. So moving on to the sine 60, looking at the 60 angle, opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is root three, hypotenuse is two, so it's root three over two. There we go, and it asks us to multiply these together. So what we've got to do is multiply them together and see what we get. So on the top, one times root three is root three and root three times two is two lots of root three. So two root three, there we go. And that is finding the exact value there. It does say though, give your answer in its simplest form and that's because of the top and bottom here divides by root three. So we can divide the top by root three and we can divide the bottom root by root three and that will simplify the fraction just like a normal fraction. So root three divided by root three is one and two root three divided by root three is two. So our final answer there would be one half, okay? There we go. So it's quite nice and quick to find them once you know those triangles. I think it's quite a nice visual way of, of, of um, actually just being able to find them quite quickly. Um, but you have got to actually know how to draw those triangles and understand where the, these values actually come from. But there you go. That's how to find the exact trigonometric values. I hope you found that useful. Uh, again, please like, please comment, please subscribe to the, uh, the channel, and I'll see you for the next one.